Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and I was hoodwinked, bamboozled, led astray. But before we get to that, first kill graphic novel, link is in the description. And uh, so I was up late last night, and I saw this tweet. And screenshot, community post, go to sleep. But I woke up, and it's all I could think about. I was so curious that I couldn't even wait uh, because um, the pirate sites, this is Wednesday, so usually they will have the new Marvel issues up within a few hours. I couldn't even wait. I actually paid for this piece of shit on Amazon, read it on Amazon, and then like an hour later it popped up on um, the pirate site. So uh, Danny wrote, um, This week's bloodline has some of the most important things I've done as a black AFAB writer, that is, assigned female at birth. It's 2023. It's something I never set, I think she means uh, see or saw, especially with superheroes and definitely not with teens. I'm proud of it and happy to have had Karen draw it. I also think it's the thing that most people probably won't notice, question mark, I don't know. So um, I've discussed this many times. Uh, Danny Lore is essentially an understudy for Vita Ayala. A few years ago, Vita Ayala was getting so much work that she couldn't handle all of it. So her friend Danny Lore was brought in because she is demographically bio-identical to Vita. They're both black, they're both gay, they're both, I think both of them claim to be trans-ish or trans-adjacent. With Vita, Vita's just dumb. Vita is just a simpleton. But if you read Danny's tweets, it literally seems like she has a fungus growing on her brain. Like, it's disordered. She'll say weird-ass stuff like, I'm tired, so I put on makeup because I, I don't fall asleep when I have makeup on. Sure, why not? <laughs> Just nothing matters. So, I was so curious about this. It's like, what is something that she's never seen that she's so proud of but she also kind of guarantees that nobody will notice it. I was like, I don't know, what is it going to be? Like Black Lives Matter sticker in the background? Or is one of the teachers at the uh, lead character school, are they going to call themselves Mix instead of Ms? Like, what's it going to be? So I bought this motherfucker. I read this motherfucker. And then I actually had to go to some others and say, do you think this is what she's talking about? And they're like, yeah, that's it. So um, reading a Danny Lore issue of any book is like reading any other issue. It's also like reading anything from Vita Ayala, from Stephanie Willem Williams, Stephanie Phillips, from Teeny Howard. All of these female diversity writers write exactly the same. It is joyless and formulaic. If you didn't have their names on the issue, you would be able to guess a group of them. Like this just kind of bland uh, writing is uh, very common. So this is what I think it was. So he says, uh, you like Brielle or Brie? Oh, either is good. So I think that's what it is. I read this thing like three times. Um, I know people like Danny. Diversity hires are obsessed with what they're called, pronouns, so, I mean, nothing happens in this issue. I've read all three issues, nothing happens. It is absolutely formulaic. I also read a backup story by Danny uh, in Moon Knight number 20. It's set in 1977. Some really good art, and they are fighting, uh, oh, he teams up with a black female Moon Knight, who I'm sure is a lesbian. Uh, and then they're going to go fight some yuppie ass vampires. Okay, sorry, let's just go set in 1977, right? Except for the term yuppie was coined in 1980, and it didn't even really become popular until the mid 80s. And then if you look at the bad guys, these are like these Wolf of Wall Street types. Of course, they're all white. <laughs> Who, uh, this is more of like a late 1980s thing. Why are the standards for female writers so incredibly low? One of my other uh, theories, it's like, oh, um, when she was saying like, oh, I'm so proud of this. I was like, 
Okay, so she's a black lesbian, so let me guess. The artist is also a black lesbian. So um, I'm not great at math, but let's just do some basic math. Okay, so black women, about 6% of the population. Lesbians, about 2% of women. I've been going through the Anacenti run on Daredevil, and I remembered it very fondly while not remembering it as being perfect. So I've gone through every single issue that she wrote. I skipped the out-of-continuity fill-ins, inventory stories by other people. But every issue she wrote, I read all of them in order. And I've only got like four or five left, and it's not good. Uh, she had some real highlights in her run, but um, the quality really, really dips in about the last 10 months of her run. And I remember at the time, she had a good long run, like four years, but nobody was like, oh man, that's a shame. Like everyone was just kind of like, yeah, it's probably time to wrap it up. And then we had DG Chichester, which was, he was terrible, but at least it was just like, Daredevil fights Cyber Ninjas and he teams up with Punisher. Daredevil gets Cyber Armor. Why does a blind man have cyber armor? I don't know. The word cyber is popular. It's like 1993. We're just, just, just roll with it. And then Rob Liefeld was on uh, Cartoonist Kayfabe recently. And he was talking about when he took over New Mutants. And he brought out this uh, compendium of like all of the New Mutants issues. And he pointed out one of the issues from an issue about a year or so before he took over. And it had this character called Bird Brain. And I'm going to save that because I'm going to do a whole video just about Bird Brain. But Bird Brain drives Rob Liefeld nuts because it's so lame. It's such a lame ass character. I think he described it as a mom character. It's like, the moms can make comics too. <laughs> like, it sucked. And honestly, I like Louise Simonson, but it was the same deal with Anne Nascenti. Towards the end of her New Mutants run, it was really obvious. It was like tapping the watch. It's like, hey, it's time for you to go. Bird brain? Yeah, it's over. My point is that back in the day, women were not hired because they were women. Women were hired because they had potential, they would work cheap, and they would take characters that nobody really wanted. But that's the same deal that the men got. You read interviews with Larry Hama, he's like, hey, I was going around the bullpen. I was trying to get writing assignments. I had been an editor. None of my buddies, quote, buddies, wanted to hire me. Finally, they had G.I. Joe. It was a toy book. Nobody wanted it, so I took it. And Ascenti started on, like, the last few issues of Spider-Woman. It had already been canceled. It's like, who wants to write the last three issues of a book that was never popular and is about to be canceled? Well, a new writer does. Because you just take whatever you can get and you're excited for it. And the other thing about these female writers from the 1980s, Joe Duffy, Anne Nascenti, Louise Simonson. You did not need their names on it to tell which one of them wrote it. It was really obvious. They all had distinctly different styles. They were given a chance on books that Marvel basically didn't care about. Fine, whatever. G.I. Joe, nobody wants it. Nobody wants to write the last three issues of a canceled Spider-Woman story. Then they write it. It's good. Let's give you a backup story, an annual, a one-shot, a miniseries. And they would just slowly earn their way. There's this new woman who suddenly got a lot of work. And I had heard of her, but I hadn't read anything she wrote. And so I just assumed, because of the track record of female diversity hires over the last six years, I assumed she was one as well. I did some research. I talked to some people. They said, no, she's not really the same. She just did basic networking, slowly built up a career, and then suddenly she's getting more notice than usual, but it's nothing crazy. So I was like, all right, cool, fair enough. But here's the other problem. I talked to some people who had read several issues by this other writer, and I said, how's her writing like? And they said, it's okay. It's not good, it's not bad, it's just okay. And I'm like, that's the problem. Because that means if you take her name off, I can't tell if it was her, Danny Lohr, Vita Ayala, Stephanie Phillips Williams, they all write the same, formulaic and joyless. 
it's like it's jury duty. And so we've come to this state in the industry that is just horrible for women. Most of them are hired out of pity, out of a quota. So a corporation who pays them peanuts, some of these people are getting $40 a page in 2023. In the 1980s, if you ask someone if they respected Andesenti, they wouldn't understand the question. They wouldn't get it because like, why wouldn't you respect her? We had seen her entire career from being a secretary for Jim Shooter to entry level editorial positions, rising up through the ranks to be group editor of X-Men when it went from a single book to a franchise, doing fill-ins, taking assignments that nobody wanted, slowly building a career and getting better. Some of these diversity hires have almost 200 assignments. Not in a 20 year career, in a career that's like four to 10 years. Most of them are over 100 and there's no improvement. They write their 100th script with the same level of joyless formula as they write their first script. It is absolutely insulting to women and it has basically started them off at square one again. It is reasonable to believe that a new female writer is there because of their gender and not because of talent or sales, because that has become the standard. Merit and sales did not lead to having two black lesbians as the writer and artist of this Marvel comic. It's because the editors hired them because they are black lesbians, because that's fashionable. This is called objectifying them. It is dehumanizing. And this is why they never get better. But with these diversity hires like Danny Lore, there's no trajectory. Their quality, their skill, their professionalism is at a flat line. So the reason that there are low expectations for female writers is because there are actually no expectations for female writers. If you're hired because you're a black lesbian, all you are expected to do is continue being a black lesbian. So anyway, before I go, First Kill Graphic Novel, link is in the description. And I'm going to launch a last chance for Jawbreakers, Cuffs, Runner, and Rock and Roll Ninja later today. Thanks for watching. Bye.